Here's a tip and a spear behind it. Xin Zhao is a champion that has seen little to no play for the past couple of years. However, it has absolutely exploded in terms of pick rate and win rate with recent buffs. And in NA High Elo, one player in particular has been a Zin enthusiast of sorts, playing him even when others considered him bad. With the recent buffs, he's been smurfing all over pro players like Broxa and just absolutely dominating games with AP Zin Zhao. So who is this mystery player? What makes him the best Zin Zhao in the entire server and arguably the world? And why does every analytics website have the build totally wrong? In this video, we're going to be answering all of those questions and more as we delve into his thought process and get an in-depth look at exactly what makes Xin Zhao so strong and show you how you can copy it. But first, let's get into our question of the day. What champion do you think has an OP build that hasn't caught on yet? Just how it took everyone a while to figure out that full tank Hecarim was really broken, there are always picks that haven't been optimized yet. For me, I think that Tank Lilia is going to be insane in the near future, but let us know in the comments below what you think, and we'll be sure to send our experts to go test them out. Alright, let's jump right into it. We're going to be going over his 4 different builds and their power spikes, a tier list of his matchups, pathing, playstyle in both early game as well as late game teamfights, and Zin specific tips and tricks. Needless to say, this is going to be a very in-depth guide that gets the information straight from the best Zin Zhao, so I guess we should probably introduce him. His name is Nathan Mosby, better known as Kind Jungle, and he's been around as a Grandmaster Challenger player for about 3 years now. He currently jungles for Maryville University and has a pretty impressive Xin Zhao record in solo queue. He's probably the person with the most games on it since the changes and he told us that there are 4 main archetypes that you're going to be looking to go. Full AP, Hybrid, Crit, and Bruiser. Each one of these has a very specific purpose and matchup that you want to use them in and making sure that you have the best build for the best situation is extremely important. In competitive, you'll likely see a bruiser build, as it's both the lowest in gold requirement to function, and also operates in a way that most pro players are going to want to play him, as kind of a frontline engage. But when we asked him how he plays Zin, this is what Kind said. The way I play Zin Zhao is a lot slower, um, and really thinking about when I'm going in, and when I can really maximize most of my damage. So Kind definitely prefers to play him as more of a solo damage threat, and that's where the other three builds all come into play. It's a ton of build and rune diversity, so we're going to just dive deep and really get down to it. The hardest scaling build is full AP, and you'll want to build Nashers into Everfrost and Zonias. This is the weakest early game build however, but there are a ton of things to talk about with it. The main thing to mention is how Zin actually makes use of the stats you're getting. Zin really wants just a couple of things here. Raw AP, attack speed, and on hit damage. His passive heals from him for a massive flat amount, plus 55% of your AP value, essentially meaning he just stays alive forever in fights while dealing tons of on hit damage with attack speed and AP. At 2 items, you can even solo Baron without ever taking damage. This makes Nashers absolutely perfect as a rush item since it literally gives him everything that you want with no wasted stats. On top of this, his W and E both scale off of AP with the new changes so you're able to make use of your stats not just with healing, but also to do damage. And his ultimate, well, it got a massive 110% AP ratio attached to it on top of the current health scaling and good base damage. In late game, you can jump into the entire enemy team to do 1200 plus damage to everyone you hit with just your R, all while taking no damage in return because you straight up ignore anyone outside its 500 range. This on top of the fact that your E range becomes absolutely massive when you land your W means that you can dive bomb from the same range as Malphite ultimate and do more damage than an Orianna shockwave. Phase rush is a must take on AP because of this. You'll be diving in and then running away from big threats after you use your burst. Taking a page like this is your best bet. It's important to note that AP Zin does physical damage, meaning you don't want to buy pen and he doesn't really benefit all that much from buying things like mana. So when buying your Everfrost, go the Kindle Gem and Blasting Wand components first, then complete Lost Chapter later. We'll talk more about when to build full AP, but to do that we need to talk about the other builds first, so we'll get back to that. At the other end of the spectrum, you have full Crit Xin Zhao, and in this build you're going to be rushing Shield Bow or Gale Force and then building into things like Lord Doms, Infinity Edge, Guardian Angel, and Mortal Reminder. You have a lot of options here in terms of order, so pick up things as you need them. If you need anti-healing early, then grab Mortal early. 
If you need to do damage versus tanks, then go Lord Doms and so on. The main thing here is that at Noon Quiver, you spike extremely hard, which helps to deal with a lot of the more difficult matchups that you'll have to face. And the shield from Shield Bow helps from being bursted before you can win duels with your amazing extended fighting abilities. You basically go this build when you need early game strength, but you also need to scale. It snowballs extremely hard and can lead to some pretty insane one-shots later into the game. For runes, you'll be running this page against three or more frontliners. Take note of the bone plating and unflinching in the secondary tree, as well as the tenacity rune in your primary. You want to be able to freely auto-attack with this build, and getting one shot or CC'd is really the only answer to that. This page helps a ton with mitigating burst and making sure you get your chance to DPS. You can swap out your primary tenacity rune to alacrity if the enemy team doesn't have a lot of chance with CC. If you want to run crit, but you're going versus some squishier champs like Graves, Nidalee, Viego, or Talia, switching Conqueror to PTA gives you stronger early skirmishing potential and is generally better in the shorter fights that you'll have versus these champs. Additionally, going for Water Walking and Nimbus Cloak can help you stick to them even more. The hybrid build is the weaker of these two builds early, but overall has a better two item spike once you finish Nashers and Shield Bow. However, the really interesting part about Zin builds is that you can pivot between which one you go first. Zin wants to be as strong as possible for every base that you take, so you just want to buy the biggest spike available to you based on how much gold you have. For example, basing on 700 gold means two long swords, and then a shield bow rush. But basing on 1000, you should go recurve and Nashers first. At 1300, switch back to Noon Quiver and Shield Bow. You have tons of diversity with this build, which means you can pick up things like Lord Doms, GA, Zonias, or any tank item to just counter things that the enemy team wants to do. If you start trying to build full AP or full crit, and realize you aren't snowballing as hard as you want, you can just jump ship and start building hybrid to get a better 2 item spike and start moving to tank items faster than the other builds. While it's weaker in the late game, sometimes you just won't get there by going glass cannon, and this build is the bridge that you need to make it. For all builds, your skill order is going to be R, W, E, then Q. So now that you know about all of the Zen builds, let's get into when to go each one. And for this, we made a matchup chart. Before we discuss further though, we need to remind you where this guide comes from. If you want to improve fast and get the rank you've always wanted, then check out our hyper improvement system at skillcap.com. We have professional courses by the top players, smurf commentaries where a challenger player walks you through how to climb out of every rank from iron to diamond, and we upload tons of new exclusive guides to our website each week. In fact, we're so confident you'll improve using our system that if you don't climb at least 5 divisions while actively using Skillcapped, you can claim a full refund, so there's no risk. What are you waiting for? Check out Skillcapped.com and get the rank you've always wanted. Link in the description below. Without further ado, these are all of the common Zin matchups split up into a couple of different categories. The Kind Jungle direct quote, God goaded matchups, please pick Zin if you see this champ tier, good matchups, even matchups, bad matchups, and the terrible matchups. Matchups are going to be the main determinant of your build and runes. For the most part, easier matchups means you can get away with doing the hardest scaling build, AP, while the more difficult matchups will likely be a hybrid or crit game. However, it all depends on how the game is going. Like we mentioned earlier, if you get off to a great start, you can feel free to invest in a better late game, but the harder the early game, the better a hybrid build is going to be. There are a couple of specific matchups where he recommends certain builds or runes. For example, taking Phase Rush versus Nocturne to break the Fear Tether, or going Crit versus Graves even though it's a good matchup, but we made a chart to give you a general guideline of these exceptions. Because Zin is so versatile, it is impossible to explain all of the tiny adaptations that you can make based on not only the jungle matchup, but other champions in the game. So follow the general rules, but don't be afraid to play around with builds and runes and really experiment. For actual gameplay, Zin needs to play for himself. In the past, he was really well known for level 2 ganking, but Kind completely recommends against it unless it's 100% guaranteed, like for example versus someone running no flash, or someone who blew their flash at level 1. Otherwise, we'll just listen to him describe the playstyle. I think something to note, which this may just be how I play Zin Zhao personally, because this is what I'm finding success with, is um, actually just like taking the time just to clear everything and then making plays happen whenever I'm done with all my camps. Like I'm I'm definitely playing Zin a lot similarly to like a Rek'Sai, where I just can one shot all my camps and then and then I go make a play. I'll very rarely just like spam chain gank over and over again because it puts you too far behind. 
The one exception is that he does recommend for anyone around low plat and below to level two gank volatile top lane matchups like Riven versus Fiora, since it can completely win your top lane the matchup. And we know what you're going to say. My top laner will throw the lead and they definitely might, but it puts the odds significantly enough in your favor to do it anyways. Your clear speed is overall not that fast. You'll do three camps in around 235, but taking five camps is going to take you around 315, which as we all know is a very important timer since scuttlecrabs spawn. It's impossible, at least with current knowledge, to six camp before crabs. So most of the time you're going to be looking for three to five camp clears, depending on your lane states. You will almost never full clear on this champion because you want to be on the map doing things to push your lead. Because Zin is so strong early, we definitely need to get a crab, and this means either pathing into lanes where you have prio and fighting for it, or making sure you're on the opposite crab right on time if you don't. As with all champions, jungle pathing is highly dependent on game state, so we don't ever want to recommend cookie cutter pathing to plug and play. Think about the factors in the game that can influence your path like priority, matchup, summoners, etc., and adjust accordingly. There are going to be times where full clearing is acceptable, albeit rare, so don't write anything off. For team fighting and skirmishing, you'll probably want to jump in right away and continue the auto attack to do DPS, but take it from the expert here and just listen to what he has to say. I guess like another bonus note is in team fights, you have to play a lot slower than you think. <laughs> like, it takes some growing pains. If anybody's trying to learn Zin Zhao, it takes growing pains. You have to just like coin flip, figure out your strength, but Xin Zhao plays a lot slower than what a lot of people would think because, which I mean, it's reflected by people's rune choices and build choices like Halo Blades tank. You're trying to go in, you're trying to blow your load and die, basically. Like the strength of this champion is finding the ideal time for you to go in and kill everything. <laughs> like uh, you, you find the right time to go in and you will win every fight. It's very focused on picking the right skirmishes for yourself. Your WE engage range is basically Malphite ulti range, so you can sit at the outskirts of fights and look to poke until you can land it on a priority target before jumping in and one-shotting them. Even though you do tons of consistent DPS, you really need to play around your cooldowns. It's fine to sit and not commit if you don't land skill shots. Part of the advantage of having such huge range is that you always get to pick and choose the fights that are good for you. You'll be too far away for the enemy to engage onto you in most cases, so really just fish for perfect opportunities and go when you see it. The way you play hybrid or crit zen is much different from full AP. Full AP you'll look for people to clump and then go in to get big AoE burst, or you'll just 1v1 someone and drain tank. While AD plays much more like an assassin that looks for one person at a time and tries to one shot. Being able to adjust to each playstyle and switching it up every game is a difficult learning curve. But with Mastery, Zin is extremely rewarding and also just fun. Part of the reason why Kind likes him so much is because you're always having to think when you play him. How should you use your abilities? When do you go in? How to position based on your build? So many things change all the time, which just makes him a very multi-dimensional champion. Because of this, there are quite a few cool Zin tips and tricks that are important for you to know. Probably the most important trick is something Kind likes to call Prep 2 which is where you essentially use your Q twice on either frontliners, wards, or minions, and then immediately look to jump onto the backline to surprise them with a knockup and a ton of damage. Even just getting one auto on something before jumping in can be a huge difference when it comes to abusing players' reaction times and also getting your burst out. You really want to hit both parts of your W, so using it after a knockup will not only animation cancel the knockup into the first part of your W, it guarantees that the second part connects. So prepping Qs will mean that this combo just comes out a whole lot faster. You can also cancel your third Q animation with R to get even more bursts out as well. So all of your spells interact with the third Q in particular, increasing the value of this even more. In addition to dealing tons of damage, your W also applies lifesteal, meaning that you can combo this with your jungle item spell vamp to heal for an absolute ton on camps in the middle of fights. And if the spell wasn't already crazy enough, it actually gives vision of large monsters and the increased range. So not only can you check and then jump to Baron and Dragon to steal them, you can use them for escapes, as well as other camps like Wolves and Raptors and buffs that you normally wouldn't be able to get to before. This just gives Zin a ton more options for running away, which before was his main issue. Once you were in, you were in, but now you actually have a fair number of ways to get out as well. 
These options are particularly strong at high level of play, and it increases his viability in professional play by a large amount. You thought we were done talking about the W now, didn't you? Since the range is so long, you also now have a super easy way to check unwarded bushes for enemies. If it makes contact, it'll make a particle effect as well as a sound that you can use to know not to run headfirst into the entire enemy team. Lastly, in general, you want to hold your E until the enemy commits something else. If you can hit them without using it, just save it so you can reposition during the fight, and you'll have it for when you need it. Don't rush and blow all of your cooldowns right away, or you won't be able to react to what the enemy does. This goes for pretty much every champion, but because you only have one dash and a flash, it's extra important here. Zen used to be a really basic character, but with these changes, there's just a lot of build diversity and choices to make while playing. We hope that this guide helped to clear up a lot of confusion and also gave you some insights into the mind of the best Zen Zhao. And remember, if you want to improve fast and get the rank you've always wanted, then check out skillcap.com, link in the description below. Otherwise, you know the deal. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to get more premium guides with one goal in mind, helping you become a better player. In the meantime, have fun taking your enemies to the arena. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.